Hello everyone, The Indie Maniac here, and today I'm going to be reviewing a horror game that I just recently completed called Oxide Room 104. I actually kind of feel bad about this one because I was sent the game about a year ago, and I only now just completed it. I started it a year ago, and then I kind of fell out. I don't know what distracted me from this game, but I did enjoy it, so uh, here I am a year later reviewing it. In Oxide Room 104, you see yourself waking up in the bathtub of a random hotel room. From there, you are given one simple task, and that is to escape. There are a few ways you can go about escaping from the spooky, scary motel that you find yourself in. The game tends to give you multiple options for solving puzzles or progressing in the game, but it's usually only like one or two. After you make your way out of the first room you find yourself in, you soon realize there's a lot of motel to explore here. The motel has a total of three floors, and on each floor there are a bunch of rooms you can try to get into. All the rooms are locked, however, and you'll have to find a key to open subsequent doors. And even after you get into a motel room, you might have to get into the bathroom by using a key or a lockpick. You will also run into some rooms that you will need a specific item to be able to explore. For example, there is one room where you will need a gas mask to be able to go in, and another one where you will need a key card. Besides those two special rooms, there's also a few others that you will run into along the way. Something that is worth mentioning is after you die, you wake up in a bathtub and a psychopath is standing over you. He will then go on to say how you failed and what you were doing in the motel and proceed to take one of your limbs. He starts with your foot. As you can imagine, you can only fail so many times before your character completely dies because of blood loss. This gives the game some added tension because you can only die so many times before you have to start over. And after each death, it kind of gets harder, but it also gets easier in a way, if that makes sense. For example, after you die, the enemies might spawn more frequently, but you will also get your weapon earlier on. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you do get a weapon in this game and it's a revolver. There are also a few different enemy types you'll run into, but the variety is not overly crazy. Some enemies might try to spit poison on you while others will try to munch on you. The game also has multiple endings, there are four in total. I was actually able to get all four endings in this game, and once you figure out the process behind how this game decides how you get an ending, it's easy to get them all. Also, the inventory system in this game is kind of like an old school horror game where you don't really get many inventory slots, but I never saw the need to have more than what they gave me. It was like 12 slots and I never really had to manage my inventory that much. The game also throws a few puzzles at you and I never found any of them too overly difficult. Also, if you end up doing multiple playthroughs of this game to try to get all the endings, you'll remember those puzzles and be able to get through it a lot quicker. The one thing I noticed with my time with this game is that the puzzles never change, so if you remember them, you're good for subsequent playthroughs. The only thing that might change is where items are on the map. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with Oxide Room 104. It's a very cool concept and a unique horror game. However, I think they could have added a little bit more to make the game just a little bit more worth it for the price that it is. The game is currently available on all major console platforms and Steam, and I recommend checking it out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and follow me for more game-related content. And I'll see you in the next video.